Hi, welcome to Numerics Video Blog. I'm your host, Jim Jockel. Joining me today is FX expert Udi Sella. Udi, how are you, sir? Very good. Good morning, Jim. So thank you for joining us. Uh, you know, we've, uh, over the past few weeks, we did a couple series of blogs and webinars on the electronification of markets, uh, specifically around uh, elements of the exotic market, and wanted to get uh, some of your perspective of digitalization trends that you're seeing uh, specific to FX. And, you know, so in terms of evolution uh, and automation of, uh, of the FX markets, where would you say we are today? Basically, Jim, what we see is, at least my experience, is that uh, FX typically tends to be one phase behind the equity markets. So it's kind of an equity market setting the tone. So that's the first observation I'd like to make. The second one is that definitely we see more and more trends of moving into electronic trading and also having actually, uh, I'll call it quote unquote, robots that make markets. We also see that given, you know, uh, raising uh, capital charges, uh, banks tend to move away from market making and from uh, housing a larger uh, risk. Therefore, this also moves to the buy side. So one of the interesting trends that we see in that uh, respect is dark pools, where people are looking to build venues where basically the two buy side firms meet and trade at, uh, if you like, a price which suits both sides. So basically, the, the benefits of banks as market makers are diminishing, and the banks seem to be taking back more the role of managing credit and deposits rather than trading. I think this is the strongest trend we see. So uh, let's let's focus on that a little bit, make a little uh, a little more in terms of the shift in market making. Um, obviously, liquidity uh, is always an issue, um, you know, as a market maker. But also, what about w long term willingness, right? So you know, obviously, we've seen some larger funds taking that role, but you know, it's a newer role, newer challenges. But you know, obviously, where a lot of firms are thinking about alpha. Um, you know, is it okay to, you know, take incremental values across the way? And what would that ultimately mean for the market longer term? Well, you make me think of uh, things like, first of all, if we need market fixings, how will we settle the fixings, right? If, if it doesn't come from the banks, will it come from intermediaries? Will it be from fintech firms? That's a possibility, right? Um, in terms of... Uh, Funds, what we and we see that also in the fixed income market is that you know liquidity is being hampered, and people now tend to trade to trade in in lesser uh, underlying assets. So probably larger volumes in less underlying assets, which means that liquidity is hampered. And then of course, uh, if you don't have liquidity, you don't start positions in the first place. So the commitment of large buy-side market makers to, to provide liquidity across the board is diminishing. That's absolutely right. You know, I want to digress a little bit. I and mean, Obviously, we're talking about electronification of markets, but, you know, one of the things we've always talked about uh, in terms of increased capital on the banking side um, and things of that nature was an overall reduction of systemic risk to a, a broader economic, uh, broader economic markets. Is this just, uh, from your perspective, a, a transfer of risk um, at this point? And what are the broader consequences here? I think you hit a great point. Actually, I, I don't think that we actually reduce the systemic risk. Because first of all, you know, when people would like to get out of the crowded room and would be running to the doors, not everyone would be able to get out because there would not be enough liquidity. That's one. And now when you look about, you know, uh, you look at the uh, electronification and you look at the uh, various ECNs, think of a trader, let's say, at the bank, uh, like, let's say Lloyd's, a bank of that nature. Do you really see, and we speak of FX, how many different screens of different venue can, can one manage? You know, so you have, uh, I don't want to mention names, but you have quite a few providers, let's say, here in, uh, in Europe. And it almost becomes impossible to manage these and provide liquidity. So I think, actually, I think there is some kind of uh, need in the market to aggregate all the different ECNs into one provider. Because as a trader, I don't really mind with, with which, through which venue do I trade. I'd like to provide prices just to one and then manage it. And then, and then I can also see because 
services and being charged by the different you know providers i'd like to see from which uh, provider which provider really pro provides me business where my heat ratio is the best and maybe i'm paying fees to providers where i don't really need that because i don't get business so having like you know one aggregated ecn that sits on top of all the providers things seems to me like something which is really missing in the market in many ways this uh, can become an inflection point in terms of electronification. I fully agree with that. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, and, and I think the regulators need to, to pay attention to that, to this risk of concentration and the fact that, you know, liquidity is, is uh, fading and fast. And in this respect, we're deserving our, uh, the end clients. So maybe, you know, the re re deregulation, which potentially will come out of the U.S., will swing the pendulum back because it seems we went quite a long way.